Margie? Maybe. Just checking the manor. Here, you remind me of a bird I once knew. Are you getting flighty with me? No. Okay, mm, I'll let you off. So where are you from? I don't know. I'm a seagull. Okay, I'll try another. How long have you got? How long what? How long is my beak? Oh dear, this may take some time. Let me tell you a bit about Hastings. That's where you are, by the way. Hastings began its life as a very small Saxon settlement with only a few hundred people living here. It is one of five sunk ports. Hastings, Hyde, Romney, Dover and Sandwich. Why did they sink the pots? Not sink, sank. C-I-N-Q-U-E. It means five in French. And it's ports, not pots. Sorry. The sank ports were there to provide ships for the king in times of war. The Normans invaded England in 1066, where they defeated the Saxon king, Harold. The triumphant king, William the Conqueror, subsequently built a castle on the hill out of wood. Then rebuilt out of stone later. By the 15th century, the castle which overlooked the sea had fallen into the ruin. That's all very interesting and very boring. What about the fish? Mmm. Keep your feathers on. When Hastings reached medieval times, it flourished as a fishing settlement. But because it always flooded, the fishermen eventually went to East Anglia to fish. That's no good. I'm now really hungry, isn't it? OK, moving on quickly. In 1339 and 1377, the French invaded Hastings and on both occasions burnt it to the ground. At least the fish would have been cooked. Is there something wrong with you? No. Well, not apart from being really good looking. Right. Hastings became a proper town in 1599. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get on with it. You're so impatient. And stupid. By the time Queen Victoria ruled Great Britain from 1837 to 1901, the population of Hastings had risen to 65,528. Who told you all of this? I went to girl history class. <laughs> I bet you flew through it. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> What's your name anyway? They call me Stephen. Stephen Seagull. There's definitely something wrong with you. Did you know that Hastings have been through two world wars? Eh? What's that? It's where people fight each other. It's scary. Listen to Fred. He was a boy in Hastings in the Second World War. Uh, my name's Fred. I've lived in Hastings most of my life and uh, I've, I've lived in Hastings since I was nine years old. And what I know about the Second World War is that uh, I was down on the front, walking along the front with a couple of other lads. And we were picking up paper and that for the war effort. And it was yet to take to the council yard. And then on one occasion when we was out, we heard heard this roaring and we looked up and we see these planes coming across the, coming across the sea and they were that low we could actually see the, the German sign the swastika on the side of the planes. All we heard was this real roar and they were shooting and they hit the roofs at the bottom of the uh, where the where the uh, lift is, the West Hill lift, East Hill lift is. And uh, we all shot for cover, we all, you know, crying because of the noise and everything, and we hid down in a, in a door, doorway. By the time we got home, the, uh, the, the, water, the air had, siren had gone, and uh, my mother was waiting at the door because she wondered what had happened, heard all the noise, and she'd come running out and grab me, thought, because I was crying at the time because of the noise, and she, uh, she grabbed me because she thought I'd been hurt by you know, with the noise of the planes machine gunning and the ACAT guns, which they were called up on the East Hill, 
and they'd, they'd been firing as well at the time of the aircraft and the whole situation was quite uh, quite scary for us as children. Wow, they were noisy birds. They were aeroplanes. Watch Alan Roberts, the mayor of Hastings, and David Hartley, who runs the Adventure Golf, talking about their memories of Hastings. The Adventure Golf? I'm sure I pooped on a lighthouse there. Give me strength. My name is Councillor Alan Roberts. I'm the Mayor of Hastings. I've been in post for now for two years as Mayor and two years before that as Deputy Mayor. Um, my term comes to an end uh, in June this year. And I remember years ago when I was a little and um, uh, about five or six being taken down to the sea and uh, to play on the beach. It was a lovely beach, really nice. Um, we used to play in the rock pools uh, and we really enjoyed that and they still can today. I also remember the coastline was a, a lot nearer to the town than it is now. Uh, we seem to have got a lot more beach than we had before, especially around Pelham Place. Uh, it's a lovely beach, a lovely place. Hastings and St Anne's is a really great town and it's a real honour to be the mayor. Um, yeah, well, my name is David Hartley and I'm company manager for Hastings Adventure Golf. Uh, and we sit here on the seafront uh, on reclaimed land. So where we're standing right at this minute it used to be sea. Uh, in fact, it used to go about another 50 yards further inland from where we are now. Uh, I've been in Hastings nearly all my life, uh, 61 of my 62 years, and uh, things have changed a little bit over the years, to say the least. Um, my father remembered more because he was here before the sea defences were built uh, along by the White Rock Bars, and he remembers rowing a boat down Queen's Road. Uh, every time the sea came in, no sea defences, the town centre was below sea level and it just flooded. So people used to sort of bail out their cellars and row boats down the main road. I bet there were lots of fish then. Is that all you think about? No. I like crabs too. Okay, this will keep you happy. Jimmy Adams is a fisherman, talking about fish. Oh, good. Okay, my name's Jimmy Adams. I've been fishing all my life. I'm 54. I've been fishing since I've been about 14. So that's 40 years. And the type of fishing we do, I used to do trawling, but now we do a bit of net nets now. And the fish we catch, mainly I catch is Dover sole, Place and cod in the winter time we catch cod and bass as well. This boat I'm on at the moment is a, is a trawler, but we've been netting as well today, so we've done a few nets. How it's changed over the years? Boats have got bigger, a lot bigger boats be going now, and now we push them with the bulldozers. We used to manhandle the boats with our backs years ago, push them on slides, and get them down the beach with our back, but now we have the bulldozers. Get, get the boats to sea, that's why they've got bigger and heavier because we've got those boats to push them off. You happy now? Yep. Why? Never mind. My favourite character in Hastings is Popeye. You might meet him if you stay. Does he like fish? Probably. See what he says. Yeah, well, this is Hastings Old Town. I've lived here for nearly 40 years now. And it's one of the few places in this country where people come together. The old town is the old town, and Hastings is Hastings, but we come together. Mainly because of the fishing industry, which is suffering at the moment, as everyone knows. But it's the fishing industry that makes this town alive, because it's the only beach-serving fishing boats fleet in the country. The men are long died fishermen down through the ages. I'm not a fisherman, but I was in the Navy for 17 years and drawn to the sea because this is a sea town. And people come here because, not only because of the sea, they come here for the candy, the fish, the chips, the amusements, the sun when it shines, and it always shines on Hastings because the people are lovely, the town is lovely. Some people like fish and chips and candy floss, some people like the art and the history of the town. And they all come together for that. This is Hastings and I and Popeye. 
cat from a shop called Gifts and Giggles will tell you another interesting thing about Hastings. Does she like fish? Just watch. Hi, my name's Pat Horwell. Um, I'm the owner of a shop in Queen's Arcade called Gifts and Giggles. Um, Queen's Arcade is quite a historical arcade because the um, inventor of television, John Logie, Logie Baird, was, um, had his workshop up in our top room up here and he worked on experiments for the first invention of television. So it's quite a historic um, arcade that I work in. Uh, I was born in Hastings in 1952, so I've lived here all my life. Um, it's changed a great deal since I was young. Um, I've got very, very fond memories of the seafront and the pier. Um, lots of um, young memories of being on the pier with my mum worked on there. Um, and as I grew up into my teens, there was a very active um, Sunday club where all the popular groups at the time used to come down. I've seen the Who, the Marmalade, uh, <laughs> the Trogs, which probably none of you will remember. <laughs> Why did she watch Frogs? Not Frogs, the Trogs. Are they like Frogs? They were a pop group who sang the song called Wild Thing. Uh, uh, I'm a wild thing. A weird thing, more like. What else goes on around here? Let's see, shall we? The seaside has changed in a lot of ways. Basically, there was a more harbour built in Hastings. Literally, it was structured around and there were more fishermen. The fishermen had more respect. Hello, my name is PC Mark Charlton. I'm a Hastings police officer. Um, I'm based in the Hastings Old Town. Um, I've been doing this job for near enough 10 years now. Uh, and I'm, my main role is the Old Town Beat Officer. So I've noticed that uh, Hastings Old Town has changed quite a lot uh, in the last few years. We've established uh, quite a good ties with the community down there. Um, they certainly plumbed a lot of money into the uh, into the seafront all the way along um, to the very end of St Leonard's as well. Um, so in my opinion, Hastings is very much on the up. They all had green noses. They were celebrating an event called Jack in the Green. Oh, OK. What? Never mind. Hastings also have a lifeboat. We do some great work out at sea. This is Shirley talking about it. Hello, my name is Shirley Hawley. I'm the lifeboat visits officer for Hastings Lifeboat Station. I was actually born in Hastings many, many moons ago. And of course, my memories of Hastings are very fond. When I was younger, when I was a teenager, I spent many happy hours on Hastings Pier. It's all the Rolling Stones, the Kinks, and really famous groups on there. And of course, the White Rock Theatre also hosted many stations. The lifeboat service was founded in 1824. It's a voluntary service, and uh, obviously, we've had a lifeboat here since 1858. So for all those years, what we do is save lives at sea. They don't just save lives, though. Bud from the Coast Guard will explain. This will make you laugh. No, it won't. Yes, it will. Right. Just listen. Well, I'm Bud White. I'm the station officer of Hastings Coast Guard. Born and bred in Hastings. Lived here all my life. Memories are vague because of the time I've been around, but um, there have been a lot of changes to the coastline in particular. There are some parts of the coast where the beach has built up and looks vastly different to how it did when I was a boy. But then there are other places where it's eroding and we've got buildings falling off of cliffs and uh, major cliff falls all around the coast. This winter I know was uh, a little bit out of the ordinary, but along the seafront here we've now got rocks uncovered that nobody that I know has ever seen before and that has changed the whole outlook of the area between the harbour and the pier. As for wildlife around here, I think one of the major changes that I've seen is with uh, I don't know if they're called turnstones or stone turns. Very small birds. There used to be massive flocks of them. They seem to have disappeared, but the seagulls have increased. We were called out to rescue one of the swans from the boating lake. That was quite a serious job, actually. Uh, it, was, it was the third time it had been set adrift that night. The inshore lifeboat had a tow that went in. Uh, and there are pictures of the inshore lifeboat towing a uh, pedalo uh, that looked like a swan on a lovely fine day with more tourists taking pictures than you can imagine. That was quite a laugh. Uh, this was 50 yards offshore when it was recovered. 
apparently that was the third time that someone had tried to uh, push it afloat. I think the police did find it in the end, but uh, <laughs> it did look a bit strange here, the lifeboat towing the swan. Well, that was funny. Hey, what are you doing? Hang on, I haven't finished yet. Where are you going? To see the swan. He might go up and get some fish. Boys.